Okay. Hello, my name is Karima Amin, and I am the founder and director of Prisoners Our People Too, which had its inception here in the city of Buffalo a couple years ago in June of 2005. Here is the logo for our organization. It shows two people seated in a prison cell. And the way the bars are designed, you can't tell who's on the inside looking out or on the outside looking in. Perhaps all of us are imprisoned in some way. We also have a motto, and the motto says, to deny their humanity is to deny our own. In this DVD, you will hear from some formerly incarcerated people who have a lot to say about the issue of employment. They understand that prisoners are people too, and they understand that being gainfully employed, in fact, is a right and should not be denied to anyone who actually wants to make a contribution to self, family, and community. I come from a very chaotic background and upbringing. So at an early age, I became a ward of the state. I've been in and out of um, prisons and institutions um, for the majority of my life. Um, what I found um, as I went in and out as a teenager is that there were no community supports. So I would come out and just do the same thing. Um, and what happened in the home is that my mother was so strict that I couldn't take the beatings and I would run away and they would catch me and lock me up. And that was like a revolving door in my life for most of my teenage years until it finally it, it advanced in my adulthood as I became caught up in um, a lifestyle of drug addiction. I um, started to commit crimes which would get me more time and I became institutionalized. I was incarcerated for uh, shooting an FBI informant with his own weapon. The individual was a drug dealer, numerous felonies, but he was getting paid by the feds. Fifteen hundred dollars a week to sell drugs, sell guns, and snitch on people. So he had a, a green card to do his will for the authorities. Well, Lord, I mean, lo and behold, the situation came towards me, and I did five and a half years for shooting him with his own gun. I was released uh, from my fourth state bid in July 2005. I've been home two years. I have maxed out. I have not been employed full time uh, on a, by a permanent basis. I've worked through every temporary agency in Buffalo. Uh, the longest stretch of employment that I did have was about six weeks at Freezer Queen and the company subsequently closed. They're spending five, 10, 15, 20 years in jail. I mean, they're getting some long sentences now. And when they come out, of course that community's gone for them. So then they have to try and get back into everyday life. They have to go out and start looking for a job, which almost makes it impossible without any support system. So to find them jobs, first of all, you got to be a part of that support system. You just can't send them out on jobs. You need to make a connection for them. That was everybody that comes in from the penal system, what we try and do is set it up for them. It's not just give them a referral and go out. What we try and do is make contact with the employer before they go out and say, hey, are you going to even look at this guy's application? I mean, are you really going to interview him? Are you going to really give him a chance to get the job? If not, there's no sense sending him because he's already been through the system already. I mean, he's already gone, time he gets to us, he's already taken around 10, 15 applications around the different places and hasn't found nothing. The barriers I face are, of course, having a record, but not just having a record, having an extensive record. Uh, uh, the, the nature of my offenses are not what should really be barriers. There's no uh, pedophile or, or rapism. There's just a brother that was caught up because he didn't have a job trying to find an easier way to supply for himself. Uh, which is not to say that it was right, but that's the way it is with this economy. The most important key is that 
I knew I had to make some money besides the lifestyle that I had been making it by. And I would do little odd things like clean people houses, sell new pa newspapers, but my peers saw something in me and um, suggested that I apply at an agency called the Western New York Independent Living Project. And it was there that everything really started to change for me. In my job, what I do is help women transition successfully from social services to employment. So I'm able to help them place a peace in their life that can maybe help them be better successful in the community. And for those who have been to prison, not returned to prison, or for those who've never went, never worry about going, as long as they can provide for the children. I had to dig deep into myself and come up with some entrepreneurial things. I started a small clothing company called Rough Buff Clothing. Rough Buff is a term of endearment for the, our beloved city of Buffalo. Uh, it's a rough town and, and it's Buffalo. So Rough Buff, I sell urban wear, uh, camouflage wear for men, women, and children that uh, we refer to as Buffalo Soldiers. S-O-U-L hyphen J-A-H-Z. So that's one way I've had to find employment was to start my own clothing company. Before I came home, I had a dream again about a program that I that I started and the name of the program was Urban Community Corporation to be able to work with abandoned homes and kids that are abandoned in the streets from ages from 17 to 40. Now what better way to build a community to be able to utilize both to see the transparency and at the same time to use all ethnicities to be able to build together, create a village, doing something that is going to make a difference in the community, a positive view, to be able to show that, look, we are viable, we can make positive changes, we can make the city grow, and you don't have to go look for outside resources to get it done. If you can work up north for 13 cents an hour or a uh, dollar fifty cents a week. There's no job that we should turn down out here. I've worked in landscaping. I've worked in a freezer. I've worked in candy factories. Um, I just wouldn't turn down a job until I got something going for myself. And it would hurt me dearly sometimes. I would take the placements exams, score 100%, no mistakes, and then they send me to a candy factory. And here I am, several qualifications. I got eight different resumes because I have eight different trades that I've worked in previously. So for individuals that maybe think that you're a uh, construction worker and all you're going to take is the $34 of construction jobs, then you won't get employed. What I don't understand is that how is it so easy for a suburbanite someone that is not of our culture, to come into our neighborhood, get all the resources that they can in regards to funding, don't really implement anything in our community, and get all the accolades. And then why is it that someone that is from the community, that has went through the trials and tribulations in life, changed their life to be able to do good, try, I mean, with time and time again, has proven it, and still don't get the same benefits in regards to receiving the finances to be able to take care of our future. I mean, I don't care how you feel about people being incarcerated or not. I mean, basically, you're going to have to deal with these young men when they come out of prison. And you've got a choice. You can either try and assist them or you can let them go back to the streets. And either way, you're going to pay for it more if you let them go back to the streets. I mean, it takes more to incarcerate somebody for five, ten years than we're to find them a job at Bless. So my feeling is that we need to help, or at least try to assist these young men. Because most of these young men, we had a few young women or, or women, period, coming in for assistance. But mainly it's young African-American men who come in here out of the penal system. And that's one reason, because we're where we're located. But also, we make up the majority of the prison population right now. Last year, 650,000 people were released from America's prisons. 10 million were released from America's jails. Those are significant numbers. But even more significant are the barriers they face when seeking employment. Some may not be hired because they have little or no education or poor occupational skills. 
Some may not be hired because they have little or no work history. But unfortunately, many of them will not be hired because of the stigma that is attached to a past felony conviction. I believe that these people are indeed people, and they want to work, and they are desirous of taking care of themselves and their families and making a contribution to our community. This is just not one man's problem or one woman's issue or the problem of one family. This issue of hiring someone who is an individual who has been formerly incarcerated is a community issue, and it's an issue that the community has to solve with people truly working together. How do you feel about someone who has had a past criminal conviction? Do you see them as people? Well, we at Prisoners Are People too believe that you should. And if you are a business owner, perhaps you might consider hiring someone who has been formerly incarcerated. Studies show that given the proper support and care, these people can be fine workers. But if not given the proper support and care, what will often happen is that the community will suffer. Not just one person. A family will suffer. Not just one person. Remember that prisoners are people too, and that to deny their humanity is to deny our own. They deserve to be contributors. They deserve second chances. Thank you.